Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Jean Watson. Today's reading is from a 2019 daily word. Today I may be called to fill many roles, parent, child, spouse, partner, friend, neighbor, co-worker, consumer, citizen. I am, as I contemplate the unwavering power of infinite love, I understand that my true self, my authentic self, is divine. I am guided to speak and act for the highest good of all concerned. I can express myself with courage and compassion. In strife, my words and actions bring forth peace reconciliation, and wholeness. In accord, my contribution is a magnet for joy, beauty, and abundance. Trusting my authentic self, I allow the glory of the infinite to transform ordinary circumstances into magnificent possibilities. And our affirmation, I will read through once, and then we will say it together. Life supports me today and every day. Life supports me today and every day. And so I will say it again. Life supports me today Good morning, I'm Joseph Salek, the music director here at the Everyday Center for Spiritual Living. And this morning it's a pleasure to be welcoming and um, introducing the sisters, Anita Hett and Kathy Lamoureux. They come from a highly talented musical family and have performed numerous times here at the Everyday Center. It's great to welcome Kathy back after her six months or close to six months in Hawaii. Um, they're both uh, retired medical professionals, though Anita is um, resuming um, her, her profession in a couple of, couple of days or a week. And um, she's also very much has a, been enjoying her garden, gardening and has a, a bounty coming in. Please join me, and, and together <coughs> they, they form the duo called um, Blue Spring. So please join me in welcoming Anita and Kathy. Jen Hanna and, uh, called Anything is Possible.
Good morning every day. Good morning. Good morning. You won't believe it, even though that was all about believing. You won't believe that I have absolutely nothing to do with the music choices. By the time I am complete with what Spirit gave me to say today. I have nothing to do with the music choices. Now, why would you, why would you wonder about whether or not I have anything to do with the music choices? Well, I happen to be the senior minister. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Reverend Ann Ray, and I am the senior minister of the Everyday Center of this spectacular, amazing, one-of-a-kind Everyday Center for Spiritual Living here in Santa Fe, New Mexico. Yes. And you know a lot of ministers do. They, they, they take that on as, as part of their responsibility, but I know Joseph, I know the artists, it's, you know, it's not a lift, I have to add to my list. <laughs> and there is never, there has never been clearer proof of that than today. Okay. So let's get to it. My title today is When and How. Our theme for this month is about exercising our faith muscles, right? Yes. We've been talking about it all month in different ways. When and how are the biggest speed bumps 
that we encounter on our way to experiencing what it is that we are calling forward in our life. When now. Now. is it going to happen? Right? <laughs> For those of you online that can't see, I'm tapping my foot. <laughs> Come on. When is it going to happen? Now. When we do it. Well, there's lots of answers. But the truth is we don't know. And that tends to just drive us nuts. <laughs> because we can't control it. We, we know, you know, I heard a lot of people say now. Why, why would we say now? Why, since obviously, whatever it is, isn't here in my hand, or here in my life experience, or in yours, because we're still waiting and asking and hoping, wishing and asking and thinking and praying. Um, anyway, as you know, that happens all the time. Um, we don't know. And the reason we don't know is because it's not our job. When? It's not our job. Now, why would we say now? We say now, big, big news coming. We say now because there is only one time in spirit. There is only one time in God. There is only one time in the universe. There is only one time in the cosmos. And it is now. So that's why we can say now, but we don't believe it. <laughs> There's that speed bump. Because I say now, and so where is it? And the other speed bump being how is the other question that we stay awake nights sometimes trying to figure out, right? How's it going to happen? I know it can. I know enough to know it can. I've taken enough classes. I've read enough books. I, I read my magazine every day, my Science of Mind magazine or my daily guide or all of them every single day. And, and I know if, if I claim it, it's happening. Yeah. Right? Right. right. <laughs> <laughs> but then where is it? How's it going to happen? What do I need to do to make it happen? What can I do to make it happen? My friend Stephen over there said nada. Now sometimes there is something for us to do. There's no question. If we're looking for a new job, for instance, that job is not necessarily going to call us on the phone and say, um, although, you know, they do these days, but you can't trust them. Anyway, it, it isn't necessarily going to call us on the phone and say, Miss Wendy Barrett, we have the perfect job for you and we have just been waiting for you to be available. That's not necessarily going to happen. Maybe we have to look. Maybe we have to mention it to a friend that we're thinking about changing careers or we'd like to be doing 
we'd like to be doing what we're doing, but we'd like to be doing it in a more harmonious environment. Whatever. There may be something for us to do. There may be steps for us to take in that direction. So why is the music that Catherine and Anita just sang so perfect for my talk? Because you have to believe. Mm -hmm. Get ready. I didn't tell you to bring seatbelts today, but here's another big announcement. You have to believe unequivocally. In other words, your belief must be beyond doubt. Why do you think I saved this for the last talk? We've been working with our faith muscles, right? We've been building those faith muscles and we've been taking a look, at least some of us, have been taking a look at where doubt shows up and, and we have been taking a look at that doubt and we have been maybe addressing it and saying, you know what, I don't believe that. I, I believe it, that, that this is done for me as I have spoken it. I don't believe there's any reason to doubt, any reason. And in fact, I so don't believe that there is any reason, I refuse to. I refuse to doubt. I refuse to question. I refuse to be uncertain. I refuse to be anything but in perfect certainty, belief, and faith. Say that a few times, and I guarantee you're gonna feel inches taller. I had to say inches, because some of you have a ways to go. <laughs> no personal reference, Linda. <laughs> now this is a big ask. This is a big ask. That we are We are equipped to handle. We are equipped to stand in our own spiritual authority and refuse to doubt. Even though we're equipped, I see those big eyes, <laughs> even though we're equipped, it can feel, uh, well, first of all, it can feel foreign because many of us have spent our entire lives up until now questioning everything. Questioning what was good, questioning what was bad, questioning what we could handle, what we couldn't handle, what, what we could have, what we couldn't have, what we were worthy of, what we weren't worthy of. We have spent the majority, if not all, of our lives up until now questioning all of those things. So I understand it's a big ask. But you know what? That's what it takes. As part of our morning time this morning, Denise and I were, were reading something about thresholds. 
Now thresholds are very interesting and we have talked about thresholds a time or two on a Sunday morning. We have talked about reaching a threshold and what it takes to cross that threshold. Because a threshold isn't just a piece of wood on the floor or at the door. A threshold doesn't just represent coming and going. A threshold also represents an entry into a new way of being, into a higher level of consciousness, into a new certainty. <clears throat> and so let's just imagine that all of us are standing at that threshold together this morning. Now, now that would be a cool thing, you know, if we were all standing at that threshold this morning, because if we could imagine all crossing it together, wouldn't that be easier? Be yeah, right? It would be exciting <laughs> because we would be surrounded by people who love us and know us and get us and are willing to be there to support us in this crossing. And not only are they doing it for us, they're doing it for themselves. Well, you know, or maybe you didn't, that you can call upon that anytime. And we will all show up. I don't mean literally, physically, but you can bring us all to mind anytime and we will show up. Yes, we will. And we will be there to cross with you whatever threshold it is that you're facing of a new life, of a new way of being, of a new experience, we will cross with you that new way of being and it'll be a crossing for us too. Each of us, I would take a wild guess, right now have at least a little threshold in our life. That we're standing there going, hmm, Hmm. Am I really ready? Am I, hmm. Am I, am I really ready to take this step? Because, do you know why we go through that process? We go through that process because we, we aren't sure of what's on the other side, mm -hmm. even though we're feeling compelled to go there. Yeah, right. And what's interesting about that, I'll give you a whole new thought about that maybe. <laughs> if we're feeling compelled to go there, part of us is already gone. Yeah. <laughs> Part of us has left the building <laughs> and already traversed that puppy and is on the other side of it going, what are you doing? Why are you delaying? This is everything you want. What's up? But we cross when we do. The other thing that happens at thresholds is including standing there at the threshold, looking at it and trying to decide whether or not we can cross it in safety because what's going on in our brain and in our neurological system is all about safety. 
And when what we're looking at is, at least some part of us believes, unknown, then all of the alarms go off. And so we might back away. We might back away because it feels like too much. It just feels overwhelming. And maybe there's so much going on in our life right now that one more thing, like crossing a threshold, to what it is that, our, that we have been asking for, that we have been calling forward in our life, crossing that threshold into that life just feels like too much. So what happens is we experience delay. We experience what feels like the law isn't working. Our prayers and the practitioner's prayers are just going off into the ethers and they're doing good somewhere, but not for us. In fact, we may feel like everything that can go wrong is. And all that tells us, if we can remember, or if there's someone around to remind us, <laughs> is that we have forgotten the law of reciprocity. Mm -hmm. So what we are feeling and what we are so convinced of in terms of nothing happening or God doesn't really want me to have this. <laughs> Or whatever version of that you want to you want to break up what we're forgetting is that our the out picturing of our life the actuality of our life the vision and version of our life that we are experiencing is what we are believing mm -hmm. I'm sorry. <laughs> it is what, you're right, no I'm not. Um, it is what we are believing. Even though we may not be aware of what we truly believe, which is that we cannot have or be or do whatever in the world it is that we so desire, that we dream. We don't believe it. And if we don't believe it, then we get what we do believe. We experience what we do believe. This is not a judgment. It is not a criticism. It is an observation without any of those things of the actuality of what's going on. We may think that our belief is not such a big deal. Because all these other people believe blah, blah, blah. So what difference does our belief make? It must be them. No, it's us. How many times have you heard me say, 
the only way that spirit can do anything for us is by doing it through us. We, individually, personally, divinely, are the avenue through which spirit works. And it works perfectly in accordance with our belief. Our belief. I know I may sound like I'm harping. <laughs> and for those of you who don't recognize it, old word. <laughs> this is this is how life works. Yeah. This is how life works. No matter what we believe, it's how life works. For everybody, all the time, everywhere, the same. Mm -hmm. So we can pontificate, not me of course, <laughs> all we want about otherwise. And it won't matter a bit. So we get to choose. We get to choose. And as far as I'm concerned, because I believe me, have given a lot of thought to this, there's two ways to get to unconditional belief. Unconditional faith. Unquestioning faith. Insistent faith. One is to get there. One is to do the work it takes to get there. Mm -hmm. And the other is to surrender. Mm -hmm. Not give up, but let go. Let go of what we don't understand. Let go of what doesn't make sense. Let go of what we can't control. Let go and trust the process. Just for the heck of it. Because trying to humanize the process is not going to work. Mm -hmm. It's not going to work. It's one thing. If we are looking at some kind of issue in our home and we're trying to figure out, well, let's see. If, you know, if I did that and that, then I could put that over there. And, and that would probably be better. It's one thing if we're working with material things. It's another thing if we're working with what is not yet formed. And we can only work with the formless with the formless. with that which is inside us, which we cannot, and that which we are, which we cannot put our finger on, which will not show up in any scan, which we just have to, at some point, accept that is the truth of who we are and let the formless do its thing through us and for us. I know that letting go of control is probably difficult for some of you. No, sister. Well, 
will stop it. <laughs> and for those of you, bless Bob Newhart, who have not seen his little skit. skit. Thank you, Patty. <laughs> Him as a psychiatrist working with a new client. That's your homework. <laughs> Go on YouTube, just type in, stop it. It'll come right up. I think it's five minutes. It'll come right up. The point is that we are the ones, you know, we think we don't have any control. <laughs> but what, the, what we're trying to control is the stuff that's not supposed to be our control. We're not trying to control ourselves, which is what we can truly control. We're not trying to control our reactions or responses or judgments or or dig into our beliefs deeply and see what it is that is that is putting these speed bumps in our way no we're trying to control all of that and all of them good luck <laughs> it won't I guarantee you, it will not ever show up as the life that you are wanting. Right. Only by our unquestioning faith, unquestioning belief, not in science of mind, but in universal principle, This isn't about believing me. This isn't about believing in the science of mind. This isn't about believing any, anything that we have ever heard or learned along the way. There is a universal principle to all things and it impacts trees as much as it does people. And it is unfailing. Believe in that. And so it is. inspire me. So amazing. <laughs> um, I'm just going to take a second to fix this really quick. And she really did not choose the music this morning. <laughs> we have no idea the universe speaks. I wrote this song uh, about a month ago. It's called Making It Happen. <laughs> <laughs> Day. 
it's a matter of cause and effect. Like a drop of water falls in the stream, rise up and leave no regret. There's hope, just gotta believe. Making it happen.